I'm always looking for a small hors d'oeuvre to serve with aperitif. This is a great one and it's easy. With a vegetable peeler, you could strip of zucchini. A little bit of smoked salmon. I have smoked salmon at my supermarket. A little bit of cream cheese in the center. You spread it here and there. And then you roll it into a tight roll this way. You can serve it this way, but it's even better if you cut it in half. More impressive this way. And put it right on cracker or with a little sprig of thyme in the center. Look can be deceiving. This is really a one time minute recipe. I'm Jacques Pepin and this is Fast Food My Way. Happy cooking. Production funding for this series has been brought to you by Cuisinart, with the next generation of food processors. From bread dough, to pizza, to stir fries. We do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Scharfenberger, makers of fine artisan dark chocolates, recipes available at scharfenberger.com. And by Spectrum Organics, a purveyor of fine culinary oils and condiments. Spectrum, the taste of goodness. And by OXO Good Grips, makers of kitchen tools that make everyday living easier. I have a very light, luscious and eclectic menu today for you. A meal which uh, we are less, in a sense, is more and all the flavor are shining through. We're going to start with a rigatoni with lettuce and eggplant anchovy filet, garlic, then a steam basket of fish and shellfish, very lean and uh, beautifully fresh, with two different types of sauce and pan fry endive in a julienne, and finally some roasted fig and blueberries for dessert. So the first things is to start with the eggplant. Sometimes I peel the eggplant, sometimes I don't, but in that case, I think I will peel the eggplant. This is a male eggplant, and the male eggplant which is a long line here rather than a dot, it says to have much less um, uh, seed than the female eggplant, so I tend to prefer that one. So we're going to peel it. Here it is, with a large vegetable peeler. I often also use those uh, either Japanese or Chinese eggplant, the thin one, long one, and sometimes, as I say, I don't peel them, and uh, I cut them in thin slices again and put them in the oven in the same way. So this is cut in about good inch thing. You see, this one is pretty good with the seed here. Must be a male. And uh, this way, across. You know, when you cook this, directly into a skillet with the oil. This can absorb like a cup and a half of oil. So that's why I do it in the oven. It's a bit leaner with less oil. So we're gonna put that in there. I have about four or five cups here. And it will cook in about the same amount of time than the pasta cook. I want it in the oven, you know, a good 400 degree oven for like um, a good 14, 15 minutes, you know. I'm going to put some salt on it, a bit of salt, and a trickling of uh, a good olive oil there. Would go, that's it. So that will go into my oven for like 14, 15 minutes. Okay, good. Now, cleaning up, always cleaning up. That my wife told me I was well trained. So I think I can start on the pasta now because it will take that amount of time before my eggplant is finished. This is a, a rigatoni. And I have three quarters of a pound here. And the water is boiling. Let's check if the water is salt. The water is salted, which is good. Now I don't need the, the lid anymore. And I can start the rest of the sauce. Now the rest of the sauce is going to be made of a lot of garlic, anchovies filet, 
paper flake and lettuce. Now I can use any type of lettuce. I cook a lot of lettuce, especially when I have in my garden. Sometimes all the green of the lettuce I cook. This happened to be escarole. A bit tougher too, slight bit of taste to it. I like that type of lettuce very much. Well, I like all lettuce. So here we are, olive oil. If you can be generous with your olive oil, because it's going to flavor the pasta. And uh, the garlic in that case is going to be sliced. Very often I crush it, but in that case here, we're going to slice it. I have a considerable amount of garlic here, which is going to fry. The paper flake, the paper flake, it's a bit up to you, you know, but uh, I'll put that much. I'm going to use the oil of the anchovies as well later on. So I just want to brown this a little bit. Okay, the lettuce. Now the lettuce, very coarse. You see, very often I buy lettuce in the market and often I serve more of the center part of it which is wider and more tender. But all the green one there, I do a soup with it, or pasta, or thing like this. Now in that case, I want to burn the garlic. I'll put this in there. Not all the lettuce. And then I twist, I turn it around like this. So to it, you can do it with a, a pincher, so that your garlic is kind of on top, so it doesn't uh, burn underneath, you know? So here it is. We're going to add the eggplant to that later on. So, let's see. The oil from the anchovies, I have about one and a half cup, one and a half uh, can, rather, of anchovies here, which is about three, three, three and a half ounces anchovies filet. Okay. Now you cut that into small pieces. You know, the anchovies will have a tendency anyway to melt. It's going to melt with the oil and you don't really see the pieces of anchovies by the time it finished cooking. So you can see that that type of sauce or garnish is quite assertive because I have anchovies, I have a lot of garlic, I have the paper flake there. So that's going to flavor not only the pasta but the eggplant as well. Okay, this I'll put a lid on top of this and there is enough moisture here so that is going to melt down. I'm going to lower the heat for this and that's fine. My pasta is doing fine too. Good. And now I'm going to work on the dessert. It's a bit of a different type of dessert. I like to work with fig especially dry fig. Some people, like my friend Jean-Claude, loves fig, the fresh one. I do too, but I actually, I think I like the dry fig even better than the fresh one. So there we have a couple of tablespoons of butter in there. And what I want to do is to actually cut those fig. You could use the black mission fig as well, you know, but uh, those are nice. And what you put, you put half a, a walnut and you embed it directly into the flesh here, you know. That's it. So the sauce that I have, that I'm making here, is done with some butter. And I'm going to put some honey in there. How about a third of a cup of honey? I could actually pour it in it, but I like to use that thing here. That should be about a third of a cup. And white wine. Now I have a, a Gewürztraminer here, which is not, which is a very spicy, delicate wine. So about a half a cup. Make a sauce out of this. And we put We put the fig in it, going to soften them. 
and that cook pretty fast. I mean, three, four minutes, the juice will be reduced and we'll have a sauce. Okay. The last one is for the chef. Cover it. And with the fig here, I love to serve a Madeira. And the Mamsle, after it's a very, very sweet one. That you have with dessert, it's very chocolatey. Let's see, this is cooking and it's reducing now. The sauce with the honey will get thicker, you know, as it, uh, as it cool off. And uh, I'm gonna test it. We can mix with butter and honey and a bit of white wine. Mm, that's good. Of course, you want to cool that off. I mean, cool that off. I like to serve it at room temperature. I wouldn't serve it uh, ice cold, but certainly at room temperature. So, let's see that. This is a nice little dessert. You have this. And you can serve what about four or five? You know, it's interesting because when you look at it close up like this, you think actually then the nuts is in the shell. You know, the shell of the nut itself, when in fact, of course, it is the half, the half fig, you know? But it looks a little bit... Uh, so this, as I say, will thicken as it, uh, as it cool off. And what we are going to serve with this is some blueberry that we can pile up some certainly in the center. With some blueberry here and a couple of blueberry on the outside. Okay, a very simple dessert, delicious with a glass of Madeira. Now let me check this is ready, so I'm going to shut it off. Okay, I think the pasta is cooked now. I'm going to drain it out. Right in there, I may use a little bit of the pasta water. And I'm going to check on the eggplant. Okay. It's fine, and you see. So the eggplant and the eggplant will have a tendency to stick, you know, so it's really nice on those, uh, on those uh, silicone type of uh, liner, you know, nothing stick to it, so it's great. Whoop. Here it goes in there. I'm going to need a little bit of the pasta water, so I'm going to put it this way. I always use well, probably at, at least half a cup of the pasta. So here is the rest of it. I think it'd be better to use that. To toss it around. Okay, here, all of the good stuff on top here, mm, looks good. I'm going to put some cheese in there and maybe an extra cheese on top. I have Parmigiano Reggiano here and a grater, you can do directly on top of your pasta. I'll put some inside and a little more on top. This is a nice one because this one does little flake. Well, or the other doesn't really matter, but. Remember, I haven't really put any salt in there because of the anchovies. I'm gonna test it. Mm, I'll find there is enough salt 
And of course, in the pepper, I put the pepper flakes, so it's fine. Okay, here we are. Big bowl of pasta. This looks great and hot. A bit more cheese on top. You see it melt as it touches it, which is beautiful. And maybe a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on top. It never hurt, you know. That's it. Okay. Here is the brigatoni with the lettuce in there. We had anchovy filet, and we have the eggplant, and pepper flake, and a lot of garlic. Okay, and now another vegetable dish which I could actually use with the pasta are endive, Belgian endive, which I love to cook, and I cook in many different ways. Those are just going to be julienne and saute. And they are great to serve also with the pasta, even mixed into the pasta, they are fine. So what I do there, I just slice them into thin slices with the root attached, you know. So I want to cut them thin. Piece of butter to saute them. I think I'll put a little bit of a, a good olive oil on top. And uh, those endive, you know, called Belgian endive very often. But when you're in Belgium, those are called chicon, like chicory, you know. The Belgian call them. And on the other hand, what we call chicory here, you know, which is a salad, like the salad that I used before in the pasta in Belgium, this is called endive. So it's a bit confusing. But this is actually the root, the root of the chicory, which is bitter, which is planted in the cellar, in the dark, in sand, covered. So there is no, there is absolutely no uh, photosynthesis coming from the sun. And it comes out of the ground just beautifully white like this. There is some liquid which will come out of your own dive. So as is here, I'm putting some salt on top and a good dash of sugar you know, which will help not only in the caramelization, but it's standard with endive to put a dash of sugar to uh, counteract, you know, the bitter taste of the endive. So here, they will get wilted after I cover them. Good. Going to lower the heat a little bit. And now, a very simple, very elegant type of uh, shellfish dish. I have here beautiful cod. You can use crud, cod, any type of filet. I have those large sea scallop. I have the shrimp with the shell on, but the shell should be off. So this is the way you remove it, back and forth. And in that particular case, we can leave the tail. Yeah. So, I'm going to use those Chinese bamboo steamer and using a little bit of that seaweed. I use that when I do clam bake in Connecticut. This is a specific seaweed, which I always forget the name, so I forget it again. But I mean, you can recognize it. This is considered the best when you do clam bake because if you look at it very closely here, you have those bubbles here, and those bubbles are soft, and they are full of water. I mean, the water splurred out when you do that. And this release moisture, you know, when you do your clam bake or cook something that I'm doing here. So we line up four baskets with this. You can smell the seal right there, you know. And on top of this, we are putting one piece of fish for each. Oop. Here, a couple of scallop, two scallops, so that would be, of course, be a man course. 
a couple of shrimp. Here we are. We'll stock this in the seaweed as well. Like two, three, uh, three, four muscle per person. Another piece. And that's it. Now we don't put any salt or anything on it. I'm going to put that directly this way. And steam it with, of course, the lid on. Directly in a pot of water. And that would take about seven, eight minutes. So I'm going to do a couple of different sauces with that. So olive oil and another one with butter. Both of them with lemon. A little bit of the rind even to put in it. So I'll use that plane here. And you can see that really give you a lot of... Uh, so I put a little bit in the butter, a little bit here for the oil. Let me check on this. You can see that the endives are being caramelized now. You can see the bottom part of it. Especially with the dash of sugar, so that's great. Now I will leave it open like that to caramelize them a little more. So, lemon juice in there. And the melted butter. A good one, one and a half, two tablespoons of lemon juice. I have about two, three tablespoons of butter there. A good dash of salt. This is, of course, unsalted butter. A good dash of cracked pepper. You want to emulsify it together. Keep it there, it's a bit warm. And I'm going to do the same thing with then the olive oil. An emulsion of olive oil. And when you have a great quality also in the oil, you will see that the emulsion, especially if the oil is unfiltered, it will bind together. Okay. I should have a tablespoon, a good tablespoon of each of the sauce per person. In addition to this, a little bit of chive. I'm gonna have my chive here. Here we are. Nice taste. A great way of doing on dive. A little different, but great. Okay, here is my. Mm. I think the basket are ready now. Here is the butter sauce. We bring that here. Yeah, that's it. You can see it's open and all that. Beautiful. So. You would want to serve that directly in there. Maybe with the thing on the side, you can put probably a little bit, I probably would have the olive oil sauce on top, you know, a little bit like this, and, uh, and the fleur de sel here. Remember, we didn't put anything there, so that would be right there. With the sauce, this is the oil. This is the butter, and this is the fleur de sel that we have there, and this is it. You know, a very simple, straightforward, but the quality of the fish is absolutely imperative here. I think I'm going to bring my endive with the pasta, because you can eat it on the side as well, but you can really actually mix it. There is already another type of endive in it, which we call, you know, the escarole. So here it is, a flavorful, very simple meal. You do have to remember the simple pleasure of the table. That's what makes life so great. Happy cooking.
Visit our website at kqed.org slash morefastfoodmyway to learn more about Jacques Pepin. You can watch shows online, view extra clips of Jacques in the Kitchen, print selected recipes from the series, and meet some of the people behind the scenes. Call 1-800-937-5387 or log on to channel9store.com to order the book with over 100 recipes and color photographs for $32 plus shipping or to order the complete series of all 26 shows on DVD for $39.99 plus shipping. Production funding for this series has been brought to you by Cuisinart with the next generation of food processors. From bread dough to pizza to stir fries, we do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Scharfenberger, makers of fine artisan dark chocolates, recipes available at scharfenberger.com. And by Spectrum Organics, a purveyor of fine culinary oils and condiments, Spectrum, the taste of goodness. And by OXO Good Grips, makers of kitchen tools that make everyday living easier. KQED Television Production.